Welcome back to APFC, where we talk all things Arsenal, but not exclusively so. Today, we are going to discuss the ins and outs rumours that we have seen over the past 24 hours or so. Must admit, it's been a little bit quiet at the moment, as expected usually in the January transfer windows with Arsenal. Um, when you think of January transfer windows, you think of players such as Kim Kallstrom and Dennis Suarez. So I guess that's what we're working with today. Um, to start the video, however, I'll discuss about some of the ins uh, that we are uh, rumoured to be wanting to sign, with the first one being uh, Bubakar Samari or Bubakari Samare. Apologies if I got that name wrong. Um, however, he is a defensive midfielder that uh, played for Lille with Nicolas Pepe last season, who's been attracting quite a lot of attention over Europe uh, throughout this season and last season. Um, he had a couple of good performances against Chelsea in the Champions League, um, playing at that defensive midfielder role and knowing Arsenal and the lack of defensive midfielders that we've had over the last few years or so. When it comes to these transfer windows, we're always going to be seem to be linked to one, and this is no exception uh, this window. Uh, from what I've seen of him, to be totally honest, based most mostly off YouTube videos, is... He's very quick. He's got a very quick turn of pace um, when he's getting closed down. Um, more so than a lot of defensive midfielders out there. Um, that surprised me when watching him. He, he seemed, when you watch him, you seem like he's got more of those center midfield sort of characteristics. He likes to bomb forward. Um, he's got, as I said, he's got that quick turn of pace to get past a player. His dribbling is quite uh, solid for a defensive midfielder. Um, defensively, not a hundred percent sure. I've seen clips of some of the defensive work that he's done, but I'm yet to be fully convinced that this is the signing that we desperately need right now. Um, many people, uh, including myself, has said that defense is one of our biggest issues, if not our biggest issue. Um, but based on what I've seen this season, particularly maybe in the last two to three months or so, um, midfield has been a massive area, particularly defensively, that we're struggling. Um, when you're watching some of the games that we've had this season, we've given very average teams around 40 to 50 metres of open space to run into. And that is more so of a structure structure issue in the midfield. Um, so that is an area that we need to strengthen. And the last thing that we need is to be signing a player that can bomb forward, which we have so many players that can do so. You know, thinking of a centre back like Mustafi, who prefers to go forward than to actually defend sort of shows the position that we're in as a football club right now. Um, so with uh, Samari, Wolves bid 40 million for him apparently in the last window and it didn't end up materializing. The talk has come through because it has been reported that the Lille president is willing to perhaps let him go. Um, hence why all this transfer talk has started with him. Uh, Chelsea is linked with him, uh, Man United. Uh, the most notable one, though, is Real Madrid, um, which, let's be honest, we will not be able to compete with Real Madrid if it comes down to really wanting to sign him. Um, but it's hard to tell, to be honest. I, th I think that from what I've seen, which is snippets in the Champions League games and a few YouTube videos, he does seem to have a lot of talent. I think he's around 22 years old or so. However, And there's a lot of interest from uh, other big clubs in Europe. However... At the position that we're in with the, the poor defense, the poor structure in the midfield, I think if we were looking to get a defensive midfielder, it would have to be uh, someone that's very defensive minded, um, simply because we, we, don't have, we don't have time or the room for another defensive minded attacking player, which we seem to love signing those sort of players. Um, we do need a lot more... Uh, What's the word I can try to think of? Not structure, but we need a lot more reinforcements as such um, in that midfield, particularly defensively. Um, it's hard to see what he will add. He does look like he's got a lot of raw talent, but if we were looking to sign a defensive midfielder, we should be looking to sign someone um, that's probably Premier League proven. Um, you know, you've seen with a lot of these French League players that some of them come in and they excel. Some take a lot of time e.g. Nicolas Pepe, some never really cut it. Um, Bakayoko is sort of one that comes to mind when he was when he got signed for Chelsea. 
he got loaned to AC Milan. They wanted to loan him back. Chelsea didn't want him. And it's not something that we need right now with all the instability going on in the club, particularly with midfield being a problem position for us defensively. Um, he's someone that, you know, I'd consider obviously taking, but I think we probably need someone a little bit more Premier League proven right now. Someone like a Decore would probably uh, be someone that I would prefer. Uh, however, there seems to be no talk with him moving. Uh, maybe we can get him if Watford get relegated. Only time will tell. We'll see how that goes. As I said, not too sure on him. Haven't seen a lot of him, but uh, I think there'll be a lot more talk about him over the next coming week or so. Moving on to some of the other transfer news of players coming in. Apparently, we have ended our pursuit for Thomas Lamar. Now, Thomas Lamar did sign for Atletico last window. He has a grand record of zero goals and zero assists this season. Hasn't really set the world alight. He was a player that we apparently bid $90 million for for deadline day two, two or three seasons ago, the season that Alexis Sanchez ended up leaving uh, because we wanted to sign him for $90 because apparently there was a deal agreed for Sanchez to go to Manchester City uh, that window, which never obviously never ended up happening. Went to United and was a massive flop. So this news that we've ended our pursuit is apparently because Arteta doesn't see him as a priority, which I'm kind of happy for in a sense that I do rate Thomas Lamar. For whatever reason or another, things haven't seemed to work out for him at Atletico Madrid. Um, I still think he's got a lot of talent. Uh, he's a player that has got a lot of raw pace. He's able to take the wing, is also able to cut in very well. Uh, wing was a real massive problem position for us. And I still believe that it is in some respects. I think we've been playing a bummy on the wing. I don't think that's his best position, obviously. Um, you know, everyone, any anyone that knows football would, would say that he's much better up front. Um, but simply, although some of the work rate that I've seen from a bummy over the last two to three weeks since Arteta's been there has been very good. He doesn't seem to get involved as much on the wing as we would probably expect from a top-class winger. So it would have been nice to have him in, but I do understand that if, if there's funds available, which apparently there's not a lot of funds available this summer, as we've always told, um, I'd rather them go to other positions such as defence and hopefully defensive midfielders as well. So I can understand that not sort of... Um, materializing for us with Thomas Lamar. He is a very good player. It's someone that I would definitely consider signing in the next window if he's still not performing for Atletico. I do feel like it is very early days for him. Um, there is still a chance that, I know he has had injury problems, but there is still a chance that he could come good for them. Um, I would say that the Spanish league would probably be an easier league to adapt to than the Premier League. And with a player of his quality, from what I saw with him at, at Monaco and and that the limited caps he's had for France, he is a very good player, probably low on confidence, has had a few injury problems. I think he would come good. I'm glad we're not going for him now. If we are looking to sign players in January, which I am really hoping is going to happen, um, it's got to be centre-back. It's got to be a right-back, um, in my opinion. I'm not a big Bellerin fan, never really have been. Um, we could save wing for another window. We've just spent $72 million on Pepe. Um you know, if someone said to me at the beginning of the season, you'll sign one, one winger and that will be Nicolas Pepe, uh, I would have taken that. So that doesn't disappoint me too much that we're not going in for him. Apparently uh, Tottenham are interested in him. So we, we'll see what happens with Thomas Lamar. I do think he'll end up staying um, at Atletico Madrid. Continuing with the La Liga, again, this talk seems to drag on and on and on with Samuel and Titi. Um, a player that we've been linked to a while now. Um, he's one of those uh, one of those players that we always seem to get linked to in every you know every window. You know we've had a couple of them. Higuain was one back in the day. We used to be linked with him, and day and night every window. Um, Sahin was one as well. There was so many of these sort of players, and he seems to be the new sort of flavor. I've noticed on on social media pages that a lot of Arsenal fans are desperate for Samuel and Titi. I'd probably go the other way with that opinion and say that it's too much of a risk to get him. Uh, it's been, been very well documented that he's had quite a few injury problems um, over the last 12 to 18 months or so. 
uh, on his day, he's an excellent defender. I can't, I can't question that. Uh, in the World Cup, he performed very well. Uh, there's a reason why Barcelona spent that sort of money on him. Um, but for whatever reason or another, he's either been injured, he hasn't been able to break into the starting lineup. There's been rumours that he doesn't have the best relationship with uh, Valverde. Uh, so I can see why, where these links come from. I just don't think that we can risk going for an injury-prone centre-back right now. The Spanish league, especially playing at Barcelona, where the defence is not often tested in the in comparison to other teams, it, it it's very it, it's very easy. It's much easier to adapt than coming into a club with already a very average defensive record, which is us. Um, so, you know, I guess all these talks have sort of the, the it's fueled the fire when you've seen uh, Umtiti at Arsenal games and you see him commenting on Lacazette's Instagram photos because they are very good friends. You can see that's why I can see why that sent Arsenal fans in a frenzy. Honestly, I don't think there's anything to it. He's supporting a friend. It's not really that far to get from Barcelona to London to watch a game. I don't see anything in it, and I don't think anything will happen. I think he might move, but I just don't think it will be January. Um, apparently, they are looking to get him off the books, though, so we will see what happens there. But as I said... I think there's plenty more players locally in England um, that, that would do a better job than Umtiti or, or would do as equal of a job for a fraction of the price. Um, someone like, a name that a lot of Arsenal fans don't want to hear, but someone like Lewis Dunk. You know, obviously, probably not that Umtiti level, but we sort of need a very defensive centre-back. Um, and Umtiti, although he has some very good defensive moments, I have seen a lot of games where he gets caught napping, caught out of position. And obviously, the main thing being his injury problems. And I just think it's for us right now, you know, if we were a top four club and we already had some good centre backs, I'd say, you know, why not take the risk? We've got the money. You may as well spend it on him. He has won a World Cup after all. But just the position that we're in right now, I just don't think that it's the right move. I think there's plenty of other centre backs we could go look to sign. If it does come down to it, though, and we've gone to the last day of the transfer window, last couple of days, and we've not signed one, and he's available, I would take him. Um, but, you know, there's still a long way to go. It finishes at the end of January, so uh, only time will tell what will happen with Samuel Umtiti. Um, moving on, though, uh, now talking about some of the outgoings. Now, there's been a lot of talk over the last two weeks of Granite Xhaka. Um, apparently, he's looking for a move out. He's had a bit of a tumultuous... Um, season in fact although I think Xhaka over the last four games five games has been the best I've seen him play at Arsenal um, I've always said that Xhaka performs best when he's next to a defensive midfielder the way that Arteta seems to like that he seems to like to set up he has Torreira up constantly screening the defense at any given time of the game we could have the ball Torreira is always that last man back and that is crucially important for us because it looks like Arteta is looking to employ wing-backs, more attacking. Um, unfortunately, we don't seem to have the best wing-backs at the moment with Tini being injured um, and Bellerin not really cutting it. Ainsley Mate and Niles, decent right-back, probably the best one that we have at the moment, to be honest. But if we want to get to that top four level, he's probably not what we need. Um, but we will see about that, um, about with Granit Xhaka. It's it's a tough one because apparently we have told, uh, well, not we have told, but apparently Arteta has told Xhaka that he's part of his plans and he wants him to stay. And it seems like the deal is off at least until uh, the, the next transfer window, uh, the summer transfer window. So it looks like we've got Xhaka for another six months. Uh, for myself, I, I don't think Xhaka should ever have played again for Arsenal after what happened. Um, a couple of months ago with the captain's armband and whatnot, I thought we should have sold him then and there, or as soon as the window opened, out it goes. Uh, so when I initially saw these Hertha Berlin talks, I thought it was great news and I thought we need to just get rid of him. Honestly, with the way that he's performed over the last three to four years, um, I don't think we would get much for him anyway. I'd be happy with 20, 25 million. You know, we signed him for 35. There's absolutely no chance any club in their right mind would come in and spend 35 million on Granite Xhaka which makes me wonder all these years ago why we even bothered when Kante was available for $20 million. But that, that's in the past we're talking about now. Um, you know, those sort of things really frustrate me with some of our transfer dealings in the past. 
Um, but yeah, apparently he's staying and Arteta seems it was part of his plans. And look, you know, I'm willing to give him another six months in the sense that he's been very good over the last few games. You know, a lot of people are getting carried away with Granite Xhaka um, again, like they always do when he does a 70 meter pass, one in 10 that he pulls off. When he does a Xhaka boom, as all the fans like to go on about, it, you know, his shooting ability when he scores one and 10. Um, but he's been very good and I'm looking to give, I'd be happy to give him another chance simply because it's January. There's not a lot of ins and outs. It's a hard window to sign players, particularly in our position right now. A lot of clubs will be looking at us thinking Arsenal are desperate for those sort of defensive minded midfielders and center backs. They'll up the price. You know, a lot of these clubs don't want to let go of these players at the moment anyway, due to either injuries or just one not wanting to disrupt the squad. So, you know, it's also not a surprise in some ways that Chaka is staying. Um, but, you know, as I said, I'm willing to give him a chance and we'll see what happens with him. He was really good against United. He was pretty good against Chelsea. Um, you know, yes, he's very slow, uh, but it seems to be a lot better when Torreira is with him. Even when Emery was here, when he went on that 22 un ga uh, game unbeaten run, um, I, as far as I remember, Xhaka performed best when he was next to Torreira. So and that and they were playing a lot at that sort of time, so we'll we'll see how it goes with uh with Granite Xhaka and um I think he will end up staying but he'll probably will leave, um in the next window. Uh, now the strange one for the day is uh there's been a lot of talks about Edison Cavani, um linked with Arsenal which, you know this one surprises me apparently we've uh, we've inquired about his services. If it is true, they've lost their marbles simply because, you know, why would you replace Aubameyang, who, who is linked to leaving as well? A 31-year-old replaced with a 32-year-old who's been scoring a lot of goals in France, where Aubameyang's been scoring a lot of goals in the Premier League. I do rate Cavani, but I think that ship sailed a few years ago with him. He's been pretty consistent. Yeah, he's had a few injury problems this year. Akadi came into PSG. His, his first team opportunities will now be limited. Um... But, you know, we'll see how it goes with him. But I, I think we should be steering well clear of that one. Um, to be honest, if anyone, if if it came down to Aubameyang leaving, there was all these transfer rumours with us winning Luka Jovic if uh, Real Madrid uh, came in for Aubameyang. I'd take him. You know, yeah, he's not performed very well at Real Madrid, but he's a pretty good replacement. He he holds up the ball well. He's good in the air. I think he'd link with our wingers quite well. He'd, he'd, he'd fit in quite well, um, Luka Jovic, but those transfer rumors seem to have died down, as is the Aubameyang ones, actually. I think Aubameyang, there is a chance of him leaving. I don't think it will be this window. Um, but at the same time, if a good uh, offer comes in for him of 50, 60 million, you would have to consider it. He's in his last two years of his contract, Raul Sanelli said in an interview at the beginning of the season or the end of last season that we will not let players go into the final two years of their contract. Either they sign a new contract or we sell them. I am very interested to see the truthfulness of that. Um, Aubameyang is in the last two years of his contract. As far as I'm aware, so is Lacazette. We've heard nothing. Um, based off how we were performing before, I wouldn't have been surprised if we kept Emery that either one or both of them left this window or one left this window and one the next. But since Arteta has come in and he's seemed to galvanize the squad in some respects, um, I guess they're probably biding their time. But this business needs to be done now because we can't be run the way we were before. The Aaron Ramsey situation was an absolute disgrace. So he is hoping that, you know, they're, they're switched on in that respect and, uh, you know, they can make a decision on Aubameyang sooner rather than later. Um, but back to what I was saying about for Cavani, it is a very strange trans uh, transfer rumor. He's also linked with Man United. Um, I could actually maybe see that one happening with United, particularly how they let go of Lukaku and they didn't really replace him. For a short term, he'd probably go okay there. Um, but I, I think with the whole youthful new direction that we're looking to take, it just doesn't make any sense in my opinion. Uh, so, you know, I hope that one doesn't happen, but... Anything could happen with Arsenal. We've made some incredibly strange January transfer signings. So, you know, this this could be another one of the bunch. Um, another r rumor as well about uh, some of the outgoings, actually, is that apparently Mustafi has a new agency. Now, 
Mustafi was very, very close to leaving in the last window. He had said that himself. He said there was offers on the table, but there wasn't the right offer for him. With a new agency coming in, there is a very good chance he can leave. However, with our centre-back issue right now, with Callum Chambers being out for six months, I don't think they'll let him go. I have been Mustafi's biggest critic over the last few years. I almost go to far to say he's probably our worst ever signing. And why I say that is that we signed him for $35 million maybe four years ago. $35 million in today's market, we'd be pushing maybe $75, $80 million to spend that sort of money on a centre-back. For that level, is is a... <laughs> I don't know exactly what they were thinking with him. He had three good months, and since then, he's been about a 2 out of 10. Um, the guy likes to go forward and do bicycle kicks on Instagram rather than defending, so he's someone I wanted out straight away um, as soon as he came in. There has been talk that we've tried to get rid of him every single window since we signed him, which is quite laughable that three years, three to four years later, he's still an Arsenal player. Um, but, you know, he could leave, but I can only really see him leaving um, if we sign another centre-back. And the only one that we seem to be linked to right now is Mtiti. I said earlier in the video, I can't really see that one happening. I wouldn't necessarily take him anyway. So, yeah, we, we will see in that respect uh, what happens there. Uh, but that's all for today. Thanks for tuning in to uh, Transfer Update um, with AP, APFC. Arsenal-related content, but not exclusively so. I will be dropping another video tomorrow, perhaps two. Uh, one being another transfer update if there's any more relevant new news. And I will be doing a preview for the Palace Arsenal game uh, tomorrow as well. So thanks for watching my content, guys. Feel free to subscribe if you're new. Um, and I look forward to speaking to you guys soon.